Hello Nikin fans, happy April Fool's Day! I think that it takes a great amount of skill to pull off a proper April Fool's joke so I'm not gonna try, so as always, I've got a whole bunch of promising indie games to look forward to in this first video of new trailers in April 2021. Let's begin with the survival crafting adventure Breakwaters, one that has you hopping from island to island while fighting massive titans. I've covered this before but its Kickstarter campaign is finally here, already being fully funded due to the promise it shows. It's a third person action adventure title but does have elements of a farming sim and does look to be similar to my time at Porsche but with mega bosses to battle as well. While there have been a number of such titles in recent years, I'm always down to check out a game like this, so if you're like me, do check out the campaign page for stretch goals and rewards. In the second era of the human empire, sonic matter was discovered in the galaxy of Netaran. It was here that humans decided to build the Metal Mother facility to harvest the sonic matter, the most precious element in the universe. But it wasn't long before they discovered they were not alone. I'll admit that I don't have any particular affinity for the space sim title, but ever so often one catches my eye, that being the epic haunted space in this case. It blends your sci-fi setting with horror elements, which does seem interesting, looking really pretty and is only confirmed for current gen consoles and PC, so hopefully they manage to take advantage of that power. This video is brought to you by the awesome hand-drawn Bomberman-like title Ponpu, which newly makes its way to iOS, which is where the developers are hoping you check it out, although it is available on all modern platforms as well. I absolutely adore the look of this, having wonderful hand-drawn art and some impressive minimalism in the colour scheme chosen. There is a single player campaign filled with puzzles and boss fights, but as its inspiration, the chaotic multiplayer is always fun with friends and does have multiple modes to enjoy as well. Another title currently on Kickstarter is the open world third person roguelite action title Hollow Mental, one that has a handcrafted open world but procedurally generated dungeons where you fight your way through a place known as the Eventide Hollow. A horrible curse has befallen the land and it is up to you to restore it to its former glory where there are town or village building elements which is always something that I love in games. The third person combat and character variety does seem to be on point, so that checks the box for action where the graphics do look pretty good as well, so not an ugly game by any stretch. It does remind me of something like Ashen, but not as grim dark or souls-like, but nonetheless a great looking title of interest. As of recording, it's about 60% funded with half of its campaign to go, so certainly support this if interested. The emergence of medieval books, a testimony to how we misunderstood the Middle Ages. Pourquoi les escargots combattent les chevaliers? Why do rabbits have swords and fight against dogs? The thing is, these 
illuminations are not decorations. Ce sont des vestiges d'un ancien rituel, le rituel que nous ne connaissons pas, mais qui existait à l'époque. In Kulinati got a fancy trailer with some real-life actors, which has only gotten me even more interested in this turn-based tactics title. You command various animal units as they do battle, and it's inspired by medieval artwork, so since it has long been on my watch list, this trailer got me even more excited for it. And digging a little deeper, it seems that there might be some unhappiness or controversy surrounding the open world survival title Salt 2 Shores of Gold. Since while the bulk of the original reviews on Steam are positive, there is a vocal minority who are knocking the developer for not finishing that game and turning their attention to the sequel. And while I was not in that community, I thought I shouldn't give it a mention. That aside, I do like the pirate theme and survival games do have a weird way of blowing up out of nowhere, but the sequel does look to be more visually impressive than the original and hopefully has some new features and ideas as well. It's two-thirds funded with 21 days to go as of recording, so it looks pretty comfortable and hopefully the second time around will be the charm for this developer. Sit down. You are not the first Earl to come seek my guidance. I know it's not easy to adapt to how fast things are changing. Now that we have the peace we have longed for. I see your hard work. Hey, do you know what's hot right now? Heim games, i.e. games that use the Viking or Norse setting, with the fantastic looking Frozenheim being of interest. As a city builder RTS that has you managing and building your settlement day after day, season by season and year after year, gathering the resources required to survive while training your warriors and going on raids as well. Big fan of the mythology and setting, so of course I'm in, and another release that's coming out pretty soon as well. The nightmares are nothing but a warning. Odin has given you a blessing, but it is up to you not to let others take it from you. Lead your people wisely. Survive the hardships. Thrive and conquer the frozen Heim. Alright, now for something a little weird. Kowloon's Curse is a turn-based horror RPG inspired by Japanese horror adventure games, having a feel akin to Shin Megami Tensei, but very strangely having an almost PSX-inspired aesthetic. It's gory and bloody and weird, but I think that the art style does help with the unsettling vibe it's trying to give off, and has an intriguing mystery where you're brought to the walled city by a mysterious individual and the only way to get out is to find the 12 keys to unlock the exit. I like weird games but even this is pushing it a little bit too much for me but wishing them well and I hope they get to make this game. Did we make it? Where am I? Wait, who am I? Am I dreaming? I can hear music. Yeah, I know this. This is my band. This is our music. This was our dream. Well, 
One of you in the comments did bring up a musical story, so thank you to that individual, who has a beautiful looking hand-drawn rhythm game about a man that looks like he is in a coma, where you use music to explore his connections and memories as he fights to wake up. It looks also oh gorgeous, and I'm always down for a rhythm game. I've mentioned that point-and-click adventure games are now the domain of indie games, and a gorgeous in-development title is Life of Delta, set in a post-apocalypse where everyone is a robot. It tells the story of a small service robot who is one day forced to go on a journey to find his lost friend, with vibes similar to something like Wally, -E, and has a gorgeous art style as well. It's not strictly environmental puzzles since there are over 50 mini games which provides variety, but the details in the environment and world building is something to behold. If you love this genre, something to wishlist for sure. If life throws you into an epic adventure, you better be well equipped. and know all the right moves. But the most important thing you'll need is a real friend. Play two unlikely allies in single player or co-op mode. Jump, run, and fight your way through the adventure of your lifetime. I always enjoy co-op titles, and a neat-looking upcoming action puzzle platformer is Leaf's Adventure Netherworld Hero, where a boy and his ghostly friend must work together in order to overcome evil. From the name, I believe this will draw from Norse influences as well, and of the inspirations listed on the store page, I think it most resembles Guacamele and is a title of interest. Hello, I'm Tom Hap. We did also get an in depth look at some gameplay of Axiom Verge 2, so if you're excited for this title like me, stick around and I'll leave you to the developer. For anyone not familiar with the first Axiom Verge, here's a very brief synopsis. The story was a sci-fi adventure in which you play as Trace, a scientist who winds up in the world of Sudra. His mind is preserved by machines, and every time he dies, his memories are transferred into a new, cloned body. It's a love letter to some of my favorite games growing up, including Metroid, Blaster Master, Contra, and many more. When I crafted the story, I made sure to think deeply about the entire universe of Axiom Verge. How did it come to be? How is it related to our world? I ultimately decided to break the full story of the Axiom Verge universe into multiple parts, with multiple perspectives, each intended to be its own game. And now, the next chapter is ready to be revealed. I don't want to spoil things too much, but most of Axiom Verge 2 is set before the events of Axiom Verge 1 but they are each standalone complementary experiences, so you can play them in either order. In Axiom Verge 2, you play as Indra, the mysterious billionaire behind the worldwide Globe 3 conglomerate. Hiding in Antarctica is what appears to be an ancient, alternate Earth, complete with mountains, lakes, deserts, and the ruins of a civilization. But you get the feeling that something else is lurking just past the fringes of reality waiting to pull you in. Although Axiom Verge 1 and 2 flush out different parts of the same overall universe, their mechanics are quite different. The games share the same DNA, and fans of the first game will definitely feel right at home in this one. But make no mistake, this isn't just an iteration of the gameplay you saw in the first game. 
It is a complementary piece of the overall puzzle that is Axiom Verge. Now, it would be customary in a developer commentary to go into lots of detail about all the new and different mechanics and introduce new enemy types, bosses, and weapons, but I'm really hoping to avoid spoilers here. Even mentioning that there are spoilers is itself a spoiler. But one thing that has not changed is that there are tons of hidden areas for you to explore and mysteries to find. So if you really like the feeling of figuring out deeply hidden secrets, I think you'll love Axiom Verge too. I do have a very special surprise at the number one spot since Symphonia is a musically themed platformer which I think looks fantastic despite not being a music person myself, and most impressively comes to us from a student team from France as a graduation project. It did skip the Steam release, instead opting for itch.io and is free, so certainly one to check out. The team has gone on to found a studio with ambitions of making a new Symphonia game, so check it out and support them where you can, since it's a group of young indie developers which I always love to see taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.